BC TV 18. Nifty is up about 35 odd points, so marginally positive opening. The Sensex is up about 90 points as well. Inflation still remains well above the target in major economies. Now the Nifty is holding up with a triple digit gain. The Nifty is up 120 points. It is a gain of 160 points on the Nifty. We have the Midcap Index which is also surging up around 250 points. It's up 162 odd points uh, at uh, this stage which means that we've basically taken out the 20-day moving average for the market. The market kind of failing to build on gains and we are going to once again close under the 20-day moving average. 17,860, it may be a matter of time before we cross it. Hello and welcome to CNBC TV 18. You're watching Markets Today, the show where we track about six hours of the day's trading action in five headlines. I'm Ikta Batra. Here are the top stories for this evening. Indian indices close with gains after the Reserve Bank hikes rates on expected lines. Sensex and the Nifty gain nearly a percent. Bank stocks go on a roller coaster ride with the Nifty Bank index closing slightly in the green. Reserve Bank led rate setting panel hikes policy rates by 25 basis points to 6.5%, maintains its accommodation withdrawal stance. Governor Das defends the rate hike, says further calibrated monetary policy action is warranted to keep inflation expectations anchored. The MPC also projects a growth of 6.4% next fiscal. TCS bags its biggest deal of the year. The £600 million transformation deal from Phoenix Group pushes the IT major 2% higher. IT stocks also rise in tandem as the street cheers the deal win in a challenging global environment. A strong January loan growth helps Paytm jump 16% even as analysts cut loss estimates. Zomato too climbs 9% higher after the founder signals a move towards profitability. An analyst hope for a good Q3 report tomorrow. Adani Group continues to recover lost ground as the management sharpens its focus on deleveraging. Adani Enterprises' share price doubles in the last three days. However, the current market price remains 50% less than its 52-week high. Reserve Bank dispels fears over banking sector's exposure to Adani Group. Governor Das says Indian banking sector is too resilient and strong to be affected by an individual case. All right, well, those were the top stories this evening. Let's also tell you what we have lined up and in store for you. We bring you expert opinion from Mahesh Patel of Aditya Birla Sun Life AMC. We also have key comments from the Reserve Bank of India Governor Shakti Kanta Das on MPC's rate hike decision. Well, let's get to the first story then. The rate hike by the monetary policy was on expected lines, supported by the markets today. The Nifty and the Sensex closed with gains of over half a percent. The mid-caps rallied the most, closing close to 1% higher. Financials closed in the green after losing early gains through the trading session. The Nifty Bank Index closed with minor gains among sectors. Nifty Metals gained close to 4%, followed by the IT and the Pharma Index, both closing over 1.5% higher. Well, let's get some market opinion then. Mahesh Patel of Aditya Birla Sun Life AMC says the Nifty earnings have shown reasonable growth this time, adds that new age companies have corrected well. If you look at the Nifty earnings uh, numbers which have come until now, it's still a reasonable growth. Uh, we have seen a growth of almost 16-17%, uh, which is not bad considering the fact that uh, overall uh, there has been slowdown uh, in terms of exports and domestically also uh, there has been kind of a slowdown on the discretionary side. Uh, consumer durables and other sectors have seen a marked slowdown after the festive season. And overall rural economy which was supposed to pick up is still gradually uh, moving up. So on this backdrop, I would say that the uh, growth numbers for the uh, uh, Nifty earnings is still fairly good. Uh, we good thing is that we haven't seen uh, much on aggregate basis any downgrades. New age tech companies have, you rightly said, they're focusing more on profitability. Early it was more of growth. And consider the fact that markets, uh, we've seen a good correction in some of these stocks uh, here as well as globally. And focus is now back to profitability. And uh, we've seen some of these companies cut down on their cost and to some extent sacrificing growth for the IPO. And the post correction, uh, we looked at some of these names and tried to really value them more now on profitability uh, rather than uh, the revenue multiple 
for the uh, overall uh, subscription base. So I think with profitable insight, it's not much easier to value them, say probably uh, three, four years down the line on EBITDA multiple, and then look at a fair value. All right, let's get to the second story now. The Reserve Bank of India's Monetary Policy Committee has hiked policy rates by 25 basis points, maintaining its accommodation withdrawal stance. Governor Das defended the rate hikes as further calibrated monetary policy action is warranted to keep inflation expectations anchored. Listen in to what he had to say. Core inflation, however, remains sticky. Looking ahead, while inflation is expected to moderate in 2023-24, it is likely to rule above the 4% target. The outlook is clouded by continuing uncertainties from geopolitical tensions, global financial market volatility, rising non-oil commodity prices, and volatile crude oil prices. The MPC was of the view that further calibrated monetary policy action is warranted to keep inflation expectations anchored break the persistence of core inflation and thereby strengthen the medium-term growth prospects. Liquidity remains in surplus with an average daily absorption of 1.6 lakh crore under the LAF in January 23. The overall monetary conditions therefore remain accommodative and hence the MPC decided to maintain, to remain focused on withdrawal of accommodation. Inflation for Q3 22-23 has, turn, has turned out to be lower than our projections. Core inflation, that is CPI excluding food and fuel, however, remained elevated. On the assumption of a normal monsoon, CPI inflation is projected at 5.3% for 2023-24, with Q1 at 5%, Q2 at 5.4%, Q3 at 5.4% and Q4 at 5.6%. The risks are evenly balanced. Monetary policy has to be tailored to ensuring a durable disinflation process. A rate hike of 25 basis points is therefore considered as appropriate at the current juncture. Real policy rate has been nudged into positive territory. The banking system has moved out of the chakra view of excess liquidity. Inflation has shown signs of moderation and is moderating. And economic growth continues to be resilient. All right, Lata Venkatesh is standing by with her take on the RBI monetary policy. The rate hike was on expected lines, but what was least expected was that the Reserve Bank will not give any guidance about the future. In fact, many believe that they would, through their stance or in some other fashion, indicate that this is the last of the rate hikes. We got no such indication. In fact, uh, a Reserve, Reserve Bank resolutely saying that it, is, it refuses to guide on whether this is the last hike. There, will there be more hikes? Will they change their stance? Nothing. Maybe a wise thing to do when there's so much uncertainty. The second surprising part is that inflation numbers forecast for next year perhaps are slightly more than what the street expected, which is a bit of a comfort because when the actual numbers come out lower, uh, people will be happier. But 5% for the first quarter, April, May, June, is not uh, the average on the street. It's uh, 4 point something, maybe 4.8 or 4.7. So uh, the, the Reserve Bank has left itself some elbow room on inflation forecast. Growth is the big surprise. Forecasting 6.4% for FI24 is clearly an outlier number. The average I got on the street was 5.8 to 6%, with several marquee economists expecting even below 5.8% in terms of growth. So maybe the RBI knows something we don't, or it's just being optimistic. The uh, uh, splendor of this policy is the non monetary policy announcements. There were several of them. The treads exchange where small companies can discount their bills a little easily has been embellished a little, may or may not work. Uh, the uh, uh, penal interest rates banks charge is now going to be moderated. There is a lot of announcement on green deposits and green bonds, which uh, will come. The uh, f foreigners coming into India can also use their phones to pay over UPI. And the most important thing, insurance companies can use their bonds uh, for lending and borrowing on the CCIL. This may mean a more deeper 
GSEC market. So non-policy announcements, it makes it a many splendored policy. Okay, all right, Lata, thanks very much for that. Well, meanwhile, in the US, Fed Chairman Jerome Powell said the United States is seeing early signs of disinflation. Powell anticipates progress this year on the Fed's target to bring inflation down to 2%. These are the very early stages of disinflation. So the services sector really, except for housing services, <coughs> pardon me, uh, is not really showing any, any disinflation yet. So our message really was this process is likely to take quite a bit of time. Uh, it's not going to be, uh, we don't think, smooth. It's probably going to be bumpy. And so we think that we're going to need to do further rate increases, as we said, and we, we think that we'll need to hold policy at a restrictive level for a period of time. The labor market's extraordinarily strong. And by the way, it's good. It's a good thing that inflation has started to come down without it. That has not happened at the, at the cost of a strong labor market. All right. And reacting to the Fed Chairman Jerome Powell's comment on inflation, Ed Yardini of Yardini Research said inflation will come down to 3 to 4 percent this year. This inflation has started. So at least he's acknowledging that we're seeing some progress in the right direction on the inflation front. And he has said that uh, he's, uh, I think, pleased with what he's seeing in uh, disinflation in goods, uh, where he wants to see progresses in services. Uh, and uh, we're just going to all have to wait and see how that plays out. I think inflation is going to come down to 3 to 4% this year. And uh, then after that, I think it could go lower. And I, I don't think it's going to take more than a 5 and a quarter, 5 and a half percent uh, Fed's funds rate, which is what they're aiming for right now. All right, well, let's move on then. TCS has bagged a £600 million transformation deal from Phoenix Group. The deal is the largest BFSI products and platform deal for the IT major in the last three years. The stock closed 1% higher following the news with other IT stocks following suit. Reema is here with the details. Thanks so much for that. So TCS is higher because it's won a very large deal, the largest deal win in FY23 with a size of more than 600 million pounds or close to 700 million US dollars. Now this deal is won from Phoenix, which is a UK based insurance company. Phoenix is an old client of TCS, but now the company has got an extension of a contract, a new you know, growth and transformation kind of deal, which is priced or sized at 600 million pounds. Uh, now Phoenix Group had made an acquisition of a company called Reassure in 2020. So they want TCS to help with the integration, the M&A related work. They also want to enhance the customer experience for Reassure's policyholders. So that's the scope of the deal. Historically, TCS classifies the buckets of steel into cost and optimization deals and growth and transformation. Um, so for Phoenix now, this will be a growth and transformation kind of deal and that's a big positive. But the bigger positive is that in this macro uncertainty, large deals have dried up. So the fact that TCS has gone ahead and won a large deal is testimony to the fact that their pipeline is still very strong and their clients are still looking at large deals. So it's the fact that they won a large deal in BFSI in the UK region in a challenging environment is what's positive. Okay, all right, Rima, thanks very much for that. Shri Cements posted a largely in-line performance for the quarter. However, the profit missed estimates owing to higher finance and depreciation costs. Nigel is here with more. Well, Shri Cements numbers are more or less in line with what we were working with. On the top line, there's a small miss on the revenue aspect. This despite the fact that volumes were higher than what we worked with. So volumes were higher by close to 100,000 tons. Or. That told you that realizations were a bit of a disappointment. Volumes, in fact, were up by close to 23% on a year-on-year -year basis, and that helped out in terms of operating leverage. Because on a cost per ton, well, those costs were lower, whether it was other expenditure or the freight and forwarding costs or even employee costs. On a per ton basis, for volumes going up by more than 20%, well, they didn't increase that much, or some of them, in fact, were a little bit lower. And the management said that they're continuing to focus on cost efficiency. The profit number, though, missed estimates, but that's not a, a big worry. That's because, in fact, they ex expanded capacity, so depreciation was higher, finance costs were higher, and effective tax rate as well was higher. So that's what led to a bit of a miss on the net profit number, but the operational performance was more or less in line. The management also went on to say that they're focusing on scaling up to around 80 million tons in terms of capacity. Okay, all right, Nigel, thanks very much for that time for a break now, but stay tuned. We'll be back in a jiffy with all of the other top stories.
Welcome back. You're still with us on Markets Today. Let's get to the rest of the headlines that we're tracking for you this evening. Well, the fourth headline this evening, Paytm rallied close to 15% in trade after reporting a strong loan growth for the month of January. A ratings upgrade also supported the stock. Abhishek Kothari is here with the details. To begin with, Macquarie has written a note on Paytm. Uh, they have uh, double upgraded the stock to outperform from underperform. The target price has increased uh, massively to 800 from the earlier target price of 450 per share. They say that the FI 23 and 25 loss per share is estimated uh, to be lowered by anywhere between 18% to 72%. So the biggest surprise is the distribution business, control of cashbacks and operating expenses. Uh, they say that the price matters in conjunction with the fundamentals uh, which is there with the company. Uh, so Paytm has positively surprised on the distribution of financial services uh, revenue by a wide margin. And they also see a very uh, visible change in the approach of the management towards profitability. So they have raised their FI 23 to 26 uh, revenue estimate anywhere between 33% to 51%. Earlier today, we also had the business update for January coming from Paytm, uh, which says that the number of loan disbursed is up 103% YOY and about 4.5% month on month. The value of loans disbursed, that's up 326% uh, YOY and about 7.2% month on month. The gross merchandise value, that's up 44.5% YOY and about 1.7% month on month. Calculation shows that the average ticket size in this gross merchandise value is down about, uh, you know, 2.9% month on month. So number of transactions have also increased by about 29% YOY and 4.7% month on month, while device is uh, deployed uh, that has increased by 165 percent uh, YOY and about 5.2 percent month on month. So all this are uh, seeing in trade today. Back to you. Okay, thanks Abhishek for that. Well, Zomato was also in focus today. The stock climbed 10 percent higher after the founder signaled a move towards profitability. Analysts hope for a good Q3 report tomorrow as well, which supported the stock. Manglam is here with the details. Zomato in particular, they report their third quarter results tomorrow. Uh, ICICI Securities expects an overall revenue growth of 6% quarter on quarter and 59% year on year. But this morning, we also had a CLSA note. They have a buy rating with a target price of 70 rupees on the, sh uh, uh, on the sh uh, stock with uh, uh, the company expected to continue its march towards profitability. They expect 5% contribution margin and 2% ab adjusted EBITDA margin, which implies that they would turn EBITDA profitable. Remember the previous couple of quarters, they were EBITDA profitable in their core food delivery business itself. And they've said that commentary around uh, addition of cities and contribution of top cities will be extremely crucial. And due to increased focus on profitability, they've lift their FI23 to FI25 earnings by around 4 to 8%. And that then finally brings to the point on, is it a good time for all the new age companies right now? Primarily because one, on uh, the one hand, we see all of them talk about increased operational performance. Secondly, there has been a massive correction in valuations. Thirdly, there is tighter uh, funding for competitors because, uh, you know, funds have dried up. At the same time, these companies, because of the virtue of the funds that they raised in the IPO, they have a long runway for growth for themselves. And global interest rates, they are near peak. Everyone was talking about valuations for them falling as global interest rates were rising. But now if the belief is that global interest rates have peaked out, are we looking at uh, some science shifting, shifting for all these new age companies is something that we'll be monitoring. Okay, all right, Manglam, thanks very much for that. Well, the Adani Group continued to recover lost ground as the management sharpened its focus on deleveraging. Adani Enterprises' share price has doubled in the last three days. However, current market price remains 50% less than its 52-week high. Lucy Baldwin, the global head of market research at City, has said that the Adani controversy does not define India and in a growing economy, issues like these will always be treated with scepticism. Although I can't comment on the specifics around the Adani companies, I think it's very clear that Adani is not India and it is not the India opportunity. Um, of course, for all growth markets at this phase of the journey, any issues that look like this will always be treated with questions from investors around resilience, around you know, clearly governance and clearly that political stability. RBI Governor Shakti Kanta Das spoke about the turmoil at the Adani Group. He said, quote unquote, the resilience of India's banking system is much stronger to be affected by a case like this. RBI Deputy Governor Mahesh Kumar Jain also added that the exposure of the banks is not significant and loans are backed by underlying assets and not market capitalization. 
about the exposure of the banking sector uh, to the you know to one particular uh, business conglomerate we have issued a press release on last friday i have nothing more to add to that so far as the you know indian banking system now the total you know the the strength the size and the resilience of the indian banking system is now much larger and much stronger to be affected by you know an individual incident or a case like this our domestic banks exposure is against the underlying assets the operating cash flows and the projects under implementation and not based on the market cap the exposure as of now is not very significant across all the banks and the nbfcs as well the exposure against shares of the domestic banks is insignificant all right on that note it's a wrap on this edition of markets today thanks very much for watching friends 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 i want to share some good news with all of you 